Welcome to CBS Studio Center in Hollywood. I'm Rafer Weigel. Now this is where some of the biggest shows in television are shot, from Seinfeld going all the way back to Taxi. And today, we got to talk to one of Hollywood's biggest stars, Eric McCormick from NBC's Will and Grace. You just came from the table read, and uh, for those of you playing along at home, that's when they sit around a table and, and read, read the script. And, and read it's, the script. Uh, I mean, I, all sitcoms are vaguely the same and, and, and yet very different. Ours has run, been run the same way for, since day one. It's, it's, we read at the table and we go home. It's one of the Amen. perks of this show. I mean, the thing about it is now the show has grown so much to the point where even these small parts, you're getting major stars. I mean, you just shot another episode recently, and I think you had Cheetah Rivera on there with... We, it, what, this is the, the episode we had last... This, this is one episode. We had Jeff Goldblum, Edward Burns, right. Cheetah Rivera, and Michelle Lee. Right. Uh, bizarre. Before you came along with Will and Grace, I mean, everybody I'm sure remembers you as Cal Mosby. On no Dove, one the remembers out, me from that. Year. But was it a struggle for you? I mean, what was your life like before doing this? I've been lucky. I've worked, but um, I was 35 when I got Will and Grace. So right. I mean, it's 34. Uh, so uh, while I was working, I was never famous. I never, you know, I, I had good years and okay years. But I, I, I did a lot of guest star stuff. I did a lot of um, independent films. Independent films, like <laughs> I did a film called Free Enterprise. You might know it. Yeah, you were in it. Why don't we make a movie? That's what we've always wanted to do. That is the dream, right? Well, you can help me with Brady Killer. No, I'm having trouble with the third act where Cindy gets killed by an exploding lava lamp. Eric and I did work together a long time ago, but the one main fundamental difference between Eric and me, other than that he's the star and I'm interviewing him, is that I didn't change my hairstyle. <laughs> I have the same hairstyle, so let that be a lesson to your kids at home. Um, that's but true. From your, I know. That's but see, but see, it's good. I, I, it took me seven years to get to that. I'm, tr I'm still trying to work to what you find, what you've always. You had. had a little bit more of the, um, the mullet thing oh. going on back in '98. Just terrible. Now you do have a background in theater. You started before, uh, in the beginning of your career, you worked uh, at Stratford uh, Festival up in, up in Canada uh -huh. doing Shakespeare. You recently, in 2001, went back and did some live theater. You did The Music Man on Broadway. Right. What was it like to, was that actually working for a living all yeah. of a sudden? Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, of course, theater is weird, too, because you just spend most of your day doing nothing. Right. But you're really waiting for the night. I mean, The Music Man, I, the lead character never shuts up for the first act ever. Which is good. Which is great. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say, take judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a balk line game, I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket, and I call that slob. We're talking about trouble. Well, what would you give as far as advice to uh, young actors trying to make it in Hollywood now that you are, well, there? Aside, aside from not having a mullet? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I exaggerated. It really wasn't a mullet. Man, I... I, I don't do it? Uh, don't. No, I mean you have to do it. I mean you have to you have to do it if you have to do it. But I, I don't know. I, one thing I would say is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, don't find one guru that uh, that teaches the way. Don't believe everything you hear. Take a little of just take a little from everything. Well, it was great to see Eric after all these years. And you know what? He was so gracious. He actually offered me a part in their next episode, which is awesome. He told me I just have to wait in my dressing room here. Um, uh, so this is it just so they uh, know where to find me. Until then, I'm Rafer Weigel on The Hollywood Beat. Thanks for watching.